Great stuff. Hope you're having a fantastic start of the week. I can see Nicole Sanders has just tuned in. Thank you so much. How was your weekend? I'm hoping you had a fantastic weekend there. Nicole, how are you, my love? Thank you so much for tuning in. All right, so obviously we're starting the week and it's it's go time. <laughs> my name is Prosper Tarovinga for those that are tuning in for the first time. Um, and obviously, welcome to the Lunch and Learn. Chris, how are you doing? I can't wait to hear what's going on. And uh, Sandy, thank you so much. Robert, as you know, I had my moments today. I know, I know, I saw your post, but I was way too busy to uh, participate. I'll talk to you about it a little bit uh, later on. Thank you so much for everybody else that's just tuning in, and I'm hoping you had a fantastic weekend. Um, and, and as you all know, I viscerally believe that the reason why I'm doing these shows is to help you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And I also believe that by me showing up every single day, you will also have... Um, you know, a place where you can, um, you know, learn how to create for and also relate to those people that you will be taking money off of. James, how's it going, my man? Uh, yes, it is 2 p.m. already, at least on this side of the world. So, and that's the reason why every single day, um, I mean, obviously, uh, during business Monday to Friday, I sit around here and we learn about the four-step process that will help you capture the right kind of leads, create the content for them, convert them into paying customers and create a community around your work. All right. Caroline Zinetti, so many people have this authenticity is the key. How are you doing, my love? Thank you so much for sitting with me on that show. It has been one of the best episodes we've had so far. I love that. Now, Nicole Sanders says, um, had an awesome weekend at the fundraiser event. Thank you so much for doing what you do for the community. It's really magnificent to watch. Jamie Cole, it's Sunday over here. Well, it is Monday on this part of the world because I live in the future. All right. So, you know, what I do basically is help small businesses like yours uh, to actually grow essentially using digital marketing strategies. I lead um, a team of... Um, about 12 guys that helped me with the SEO part of the, the job that helped me with the behind the scenes so that I have time to create for and relate to all of those people that we're going to be working with. Now, if you've been um, watching some of my stuff lately, you'll notice that I started having a show where I interview other entrepreneurs so that they can impart knowledge and value to other um, you know, um, entrepreneurs that are in our audience uh, through the online prosperity show. So every single day I reach out to say maybe um, minimum 50 or yeah, I, I, I do reach out to maybe 50 or 70 people a day, either on, on, on Instagram or on Facebook. And I ask them and I invite them to come and share their expertise and their knowledge um, on the show. So on average, I then end up doing maybe six or seven episodes a day uh, on a really good day, maybe 10 episodes, just depends on, on, you know, the people. And some of the people that are watching here have been part of the show. Thank you so much. But I find that a lot of people decline uh, being on, on the show. First of all, I lead with saying, I want, us, I want you and me to create something for my audience and also something for your audience so that they understand what you do. Um, and a lot of people say no, all right? I pretty much understand maybe people are busy or people really have maybe other better platforms they want to be on. But what I've really actually gone to find out is people are afraid of being called out, all right? People are afraid of, um, you know, people discovering that maybe they don't quite know what they're talking about or people are afraid that maybe they are not good enough to provide value to other people. Yet they are running a business, yet, um, you know, they are coaching people out there uh, in the privacy of their, you know, their own business or their, um, you know, their communication with the people that they quite know. And as soon as they're given a platform or an opportunity to go public with their work, they shrug because they're afraid of what other people are going to think about their value, their knowledge or their worth. 
Now, I've been trying to figure out, and um, as somebody who is so awake, somebody who is so in tune with what's happening, I know it's not to do with me. It's not to do with my platform. It's not to do with the show. It has a lot to do with the recipient or the person who's gotten that message. Maybe they are within themselves not confident. Maybe they are within themselves lacking that, um, you know, that, that, that real self-esteem to think that they can provide value. Maybe they are afraid they have imposter syndrome, all right? And imposter syndrome basically is that state of mind where you think, oh my God, I don't think I'm good enough. People are going to catch me out, you know? So I went on and I started reading. As you would know, I really want to understand everything around me. I want to understand the reason why. Uh, some people, um, you know, work in a certain way, the reason why some people react, um, you know, the way they do. And I was just reading about um, the imposter syndrome and I realized that it is actually a fear that people think they're not really as capable as they project themselves to be. And I figured out that it's not just, um, you know, everyday entrepreneurs like ourselves. Um, it's not somebody like you and me. Even people like Sheryl Sandberg, the COO of, um, you know, of Facebook, it's a, it's apparently a common phenomenon. You know, even people or actresses like Judy Foster, according to 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 Quartz, you know, they are actually afraid of stepping into the limelight because who they are in person is not who they think the world perceives them to be. You know, and uh, honestly, say sometimes it can be as little as overwhelming as well as exciting when somebody reaches out to you and wants you to share what you do, especially when that's never happened before. Honestly, do you think maybe people suffer from imposter syndrome? Because it is a well known phenomenon, and um, it is something that it's not just you that's going through that. Because as human beings, we have a perceived version of ourselves, which is basically not in direct correspondence to what you think the world thinks off of you. First of all, let me tell you something. Nobody cares. Everybody's just really trying to figure out where they're going to get their next meal, where they're going to get their, when are they going to get laid next? What are they going to wear? What are they going to uh, talk? Or what are they going to say? That's always happening in people's mind. And we also then get caught up in, in, in what we think other people are thinking about ourselves. And that's when you now start suffering from imposter syndrome. Whereas you're, you're being given an opportunity to share your message to people that never knew of your existence. You know? Apparently you can actually take a test... Um, you know, o online, um, I think if you look it up, you can, you can check it out to see whether this um, anxiety inducing condition is what you have. So you know what I did? I actually did take that test and I came up, you know, relatively clean. Because first of all, if somebody reaches out to me and says, hey, Prosper, I want to talk to you about this. Automatically, I give them my calendar. Automatically, I ask them, what are we going to talk about? Automatically, I don't even ask so many questions. I'm just like, I'm here. Let's do it. So I think maybe the reason why some people feel inadequate is because they're not prepared enough. You know? And as we say, it's true. And yet, we are there each and every day providing value to people because um, of what we do. Exactly. So... At the end of the day, you know, it's not surprising that you feel like you're being put in the limelight. It's not surprising that you feel like, um, you know, you, when you're being asked questions, you might answer it the wrong way. That's not it. It's just your ego that is protecting you because your brain is literally wired for you to look for food, to look for sex, for procreation, and literally look for your homeostasis and your safety. All of this that we put on to each other, you know, the Facebook, social media, etiquette and all that stuff, that is excess stuff that your brain has to go through and process in order for you to function in a civilized uh, community. So at the core of our brains, we're still cavemen. We are still at the core of where we are. We are still really 
you know, a little bit advanced cave people. Because that's all we ever think of. No matter how you think civilized you are, your brain will, will tell you exactly where you belong, which is in the cave. And that's the reason why people are afraid of, you know, showing up in public. People are afraid because back in the time, if you did not act according to what, um, you know, the, um, the, 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 the society or according to what, um, you know, your community or your group, um, you know, liked or behaved like, you were cast out. You were cast out of the group. And guess what that means when you are cast out of the group? You have no protection. You have no means of, of food, finding food. And if anything comes, it was going to kill you there and there. So that's the reason why we are so afraid of being thrown out of the herd. But guess what? You live in an apartment right now. I live in a house or you, you drive in a car. And, 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 and there's no way that if somebody refuses or denies your um, methods or, your, or accepts you as one of them, you are not cast out. You can still reach out to a lot more other people on social media. So it's very difficult for us to now understand we are no longer living in the caveman eras because our brain, our limbic brain is wired for our own protection. So that's the reason why people go into fight or flight mode because you are there to protect yourself. And when you're in fight or flight mode, guess what happens? Your brain stops, I mean, your, your brain stops thinking of all the activities that could help you move forward. Chris, thank you so much. I appreciate you too. All right? Because when, you, when you're functioning right now, your brain is working towards you having a 10-year, 20-year lifespan. Your brain is thinking of your future and all that stuff. But as soon as you're afraid, as soon as you get caught like a deer with the headlights, guess what happens? Your brain is just focusing on getting you out of that problem. You stop thinking of what you're supposed to do. You stop thinking of how many people you can help. You now just think from a place of ego. Guess what that says about you now? Instead of you going, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I probably didn't have much to contribute. You are now being just treated as a douchebag because you have allowed the fear to consume you. And now you can't even reach out to an audience that was anticipating your message. And now you're just stuck in there with no one who actually really wants to hear your message. And it's not surprising. We're getting older, and, and the older we are getting, the more exposure we need to be having. But we don't quite know our strengths and our weaknesses up until somebody points them out to ourselves. Or if we actually read and discover what those strengths and weaknesses are. So sometimes maybe you're achieving a lot in life. With every achievement, there's a lot. There's an equal and opposite reaction, which is usually humiliating. Sometimes we are afraid that our skeletons in the closet would, would be shown in the open if, we, if, if somebody reaches out and says, hey, listen, I want to talk to you about your work. So your self-image is, is, is pretty inconsistent with what, you know, the reality you think you're, you're presenting out there. Do you know people go into the bathroom to do number twos? Can you type in, if you don't actually do number twos every time you're in the bathroom, sometimes. But when you visit other people's houses, you probably don't even go to number two because you're, you're afraid that they might talk about you behind your back. That's the reason why they have that toilet in there for the first place. So your self-image is, is, is really stopping you from reaching greatness in life. You know? As Popeye says, I am what I am, no more, no less. You should start really accepting that, yes, you can fail. And it's, it's perfectly normal. Yes, you might mince your words. It's perfectly normal. You are human for crying out loud. You know? Maybe, maybe I'm just an anomaly, you know? Of course, my wife, who is, you know, always saying that I'm full of shit. <laughs> You know, she's always saying that I talk, I talk gibberish, you know, and, and, and I'm just incredibly lucky. I don't care what other people think. I don't care what anybody else is going to say after 
um, you know, anything because I don't do this for people. I do this for me and that one particular person who's meant to hear this message. There could just be two people watching this video right now, this live video. But you know what? I'm going to take it off and put it on YouTube. And guess what? Somebody else in the future or my great grandkids are just going to be like, oh, my God, my granddad worked. Marisa Macias, thank you so much for tuning in. You know what I mean? So it actually turns out the only person on earth whose opinion matters to me is my wife's opinion. And she's the only one that I care to impress. Everybody else is just luck that they do happen to bump into me. You know? <laughs> Robert says number twos can be stuff of a legend. So I try to leave that at home. But, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, you still do number twos. But when you're walking around, you make it look like you don't even do number twos. And Sandy says, I'm happy to void my balls wherever, whenever it's needed. I promise to use this. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably take note when you come and visit Sandy. You know? Do you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, it's the longer you, you, you live, the more you know that you really got to contribute. You know? So some people really, really don't quite. Okay, let's go back because Jamie says this feed is turning out quite differently than I anticipated. I don't know what you anticipated, but we're talking reality, bruh. And the reason why some people don't want to talk about facts is because they have a perceived view of who they're supposed to be, which is not true. And that's the reason why today we're talking about doo-doo, because it is something that is, you know, in our lives. Do you know what I mean? So back to the imposter syndrome, you know, the, 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 what I read implied that even a lot of successful people who inevitably they raise the bar high so much, uh, you know, for themselves. They feel like they can achieve something, maybe first of all by themselves, and then second of all, they just simply have high expectation and they think that everybody's watching. Nobody cares. People are busy trying not to die. <laughs> you know what I mean? People are busy trying to make sure their families are fed. Right? So some people are afraid of showing up because they're afraid, you know, some people would think they're not inadequate. People will only listen if you've got something for them. And some people really, really are never satisfied with their own accomplishments because they always want more. And that's the reason why no matter how accomplished they may be, I talked about, um, you know, um, you know, Sherry Sandberg earlier and people like Judy Foster. Even if they have 500 Oscars and, and all these accolades, they still shy because they think that people are going to find out they're a real fraud in real life. you got to laugh at the irony, you know. Overachievers are probably the last people you think that worry about this sort of thing. But you know who the real frauds are? <laughs> you know who the real frauds are? Those people that think they know it all. Those self-proclaimed you know, proclaimed experts and gurus that have got nothing to offer. Those are the real frauds. You have something to offer. Your life story and your, you know, your, your, your life story and your experience have greater commercial value because you are here to live, learn, and contribute. And your contribution is to help other people go through what you've been through. Those people that are self-proclaimed gurus or whatever, they're the ones that, that, are, that are clueless, not you. Do you know what I mean? They're the ones that have overinflated egos. You shouldn't let that worry you because they don't know and, and whatever they talk about is not worth written on the paper, you know, that, that you read it on or, or, or the screen that you're watching them on. So the more you mature, the more you understand your personal brand, your values, your ethos and everything else that's a, a, about you, no one can ever doubt your story. 
You know? Sandy says, I learned early in life that being authentic is a gift to others. I love raw people. I always wear my skeletons on the outside. For real. Do you know what I mean? When, you, when you're young, you know, when you're young, you think that the world revolves around us. We often think that we're, we're smarter, we're more capable than we are. You know, that's the reason why we even go on and lie to our teachers and say, hey, the dog ate my homework. The teacher can see through you. They've been through all of that. You can see through people that are lying. But if you're genuine inside, people will actually love you a whole lot more because they're tired of copycats. And then by the time you experience, um, you know, you know, you know, you know, when, when you start growing and you're becoming, you know, mature, you start putting things in perspective and it's called growing up. So if you are afraid of putting out your best foot forward just because you, you're afraid of what people would think, bruh, you're just afraid of yourself because everybody's busy trying to be who they're supposed to be. I mean, sure, sure enough, you know, when I was growing up, I was arrogant. I thought I was God's gift to the ladies. So full of myself when I was young. You wouldn't catch me talking to anyone or trying to help anyone for free. Because I thought I was so valuable. I thought I had all the answers. You know, and I really hated to admit that I was wrong. Which was probably most of the time. You know, growing this hair was, was out of rebelliousness, but now I've put it into my new character. You know? So, some people, you know, at, at the end of the day, they think they are superficial. But we all go through the bathroom. We are all human. You cut me, I bleed. And I'm still talking about myself. Deep inside, I, I knew better, though. I was about as, in as, as insecure as anyone can be. You know? Sometimes that's where the imposter syndrome comes in. You just become so defensive and you overcompensate as a result of being young and dumb. But that's not you. You've got something, something that has taken you from where you were to where you are now. Somebody is going through that and you can help them. So it's not imposter syndrome. You know? Sometimes once you start achieving, once you start having people coming back to you, maybe that will give you the strength in, 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 in getting the confidence that you can actually help people. But obviously, you know, in cultures like the Australian culture where there's what is called the tall poppy syndrome, you know, maybe the reasons why our culture often, um, you know, associates success with, with privilege or luck is because a lot of people don't go out of their way and they're just meant to, you know, be the standard. You know, you just really, really, really need to step out of who you are, find out what are your strengths, what are your capabilities and just be real. Charlie, man, how's it going? You know? Because, look, if you really want to know what drives highly, um, you know, accomplished people, it's usually the passion they have for their work. So make that your credibility. The fact that you're waking up every single day and doing what you're doing, you are credible enough because you're doing something to, uh, go, to achieve something and you're going to get results from it. And if you're always striving for more and if you're always seeking out to, 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 to really, really help and, you know. At the end of the day, sometimes we just paralyze ourselves by thinking we're not adequate enough. We don't seek out for help because we are afraid that people will find out that we are incompetent. And guess what the other biggest thing is? A lot of people don't seek out an accountant because they're afraid of showing their books and they're afraid of showing that they're not actually making money. The bar is never high enough. There's always somebody who is richer. Have you ever noticed, even Jeff Bezos, he's always struggling to be the richest person because maybe somebody comes in, you know, um, Warren Buffett just does a deal and then all of a sudden he's the richest and then tomorrow morning uh, somebody comes in and they're the richest. 
You, the, the bar is never high enough. You can never be it. There's always somebody higher. So learn to accept that. And once the confidence that you need has to come from within. And stop taking your insecurities and your, your, your fears to become your narrative. You are human. Doing human things. Every person that you see, every celebrity sits on the toilet and does number two. No matter how successful you get, you're always going to have a little, you know, self-doubt that's going to be lurking behind your mind. But don't let that stop you from reaching just because you think you're not good enough. You know, you're just human. And I guess we all have a little imposter syndrome inside of us, but then don't let that stop you, bro. You know, once you define your personal brand, you will notice no fingers are the same height. So who are you comparing yourself to? There's no finger that's the same height as the other one. So if you're going to say, oh, maybe I'm not good enough, according to who, bro? According to who? Just go out there, tell your story. You know? And then you'll find out there's other people that can actually help you or they actually need to be to, 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 to be helped. You know? So the imposter syndrome, I mean, I know that name alone just makes us shudder. And, you know, yet we... The real effects of it is you're just stopping yourself from actually reaching out because you, you can't climb the mountain or a tree with your hands pursed like this or your hands in your pockets. If your hands are too full of your ego, how are you going to be able to receive? Let go of that ego. Everybody else goes to the toilet, bruh. So sometimes, you know, when you feel like an imposter, it shoves you in the shadows. It prevents you to put out your best work. It forces you to live in the fear of being found out. And the more people don't know who you are, the more you are not even anything. You know? It doesn't matter how strong or how, 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 how pompous you think you are. At some point, you're going to need somebody to help you. So it doesn't matter where, where you've been or what you are or what stage you are as an entrepreneur. Just go out there and give it your best shot every single time. And any opportunity that comes your way, don't be afraid just because your ego is stopping you. Even people like Mary Lil Strip, they have how many? 550 Academy Awards, but they're always afraid. So if people like Meryl Streep struggle, then the struggle is real, my friend, and we must all face it. You know? Just let loose of your ego. It would make you procrastinate. It will alienate you from, um, you know, a lot of people. Just, that is a syndrome. And before you know it, you're left out and you're thinking that people are actually noticing when nobody is. It's not, it's not your fault. It's not anyone's fault. We just don't have it enough in us to get past the ego if you're not mentally strong. Nobody's perfect. Perfection does not exist. And guess what? At the end of the day, whatever is going to happen, we can't control what other people think. But we can live in the awareness that sometimes we are actually a superhero. And sometimes all we just need to do is go out there and help somebody else for us to regain that, um, you know, self-awareness. You know, so the best way to fix that imposter syndrome is just to fix your areas of struggle. What are you weak at? Get somebody else to help you do that. And be honest when you're sharing this. Let your feelings allow you to, to, to align with those struggles because it, I, I, I can't write. That's a fact. 
and I can talk. So that's the reason why I I do videos like this and then it's turned into 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 some sort of content. Just accept that today you're a superhero to somebody else who is down in the trenches and doesn't know what to do with themselves. And there's no reason to prove anyone wrong because nobody even bothered to question if you were right or not. Step up the ego. Alright? In the meantime, I just wanted to throw this out there just so that you understand that bra, sister, it's all up to you. Alright? You can't control what other people think, but you can control what's up there. I really want you to win. Like, you have no idea. Yeah? I want you to have a fantastic week as well. Alright? In the meantime, thank you so much. Sandy! <laughs> You're being naughty, aren't you? Yeah? <laughs> All right, and Robert, thank you so much. Thank you so much for everything that you're like, all right? At the end of the day, I really want you to, you know, go out there and, and, and do what's really, you know, you know, meant and is aligned to you. There's a lot for everyone out there. I just really hope you can see it. Don't cloud your vision with your ego, all right? Because nobody's watching, nobody cares, unless you're doing something for them, all right? In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day, and thank you, thank you so much. Chris! I saw your message. I'm going to reply a little bit later on. Thank you so much.